Hello, and welcome to the Ask Dr. Pakel Show. All right, so have you ever kind of wondered, you know, people talk about fats and oils and polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, omega-3, omega-6. What does all that mean? So let, let's kind of boil that down and talk about it and kind of add an order to these things so it's more understandable. Because some of these fats, fantastic. Some of them, not good at all. All right, so there's about seven different classes of fats. And so we're going to break those down from the best to the worst. So let's dive right in here with number one, the one that you need the most, the omega-3s. And you know, just to kind of back up a little, when you hear that term essential fatty acids, EFAs, what does that mean? Essential means we can't get them, our body can't make them on its own. We have to get them through our diet. So we've got to find foods that help uh, to, to bring that in, especially those these omega-3s, not only as adults, but even as newborns, even before we're born, we need these things for proper development of so many things. I mean, yeah, they're anti-inflammatory, inflammatory, great for your heart. Probably one of the biggest things about omega-3s is great for your brain. I mean, brain development. And when we think of brain, we just think of, hey, thinking and things like, no, no. I mean, this goes into eye development. You know, am I going to have 20-20 vision? Um, you know, is, is my kid um, going to have 20-20 vision? You know, um, I mean, this can have a big effect on that, um, but definitely ties into cognition, focus, concentration, memory, um, you know, just, just all the factors of the brain developing, the, the covering around your nerves called myelin and developing properly um, for transmission and insulation. Um, and, and not only the brain, but the mitochondria, which are probably the most important part. This is where energy is manufactured. I don't know if you remember science class from a long time ago. They said it's the powerhouse of the cell. So yeah, I mean, this is where energy is manufactured. And not only in our cells of our body, but especially in the brain, this is so important, especially in our nervous system. So um, again, what were we saying? It contributes to brain nerve uh, function and structure. There's a problem though, if you're deficient, yeah, this can cause heart issues. This can cause depression, cause anxiety. If you're deficient in these things, you'll start to notice maybe your hair isn't doing too well, your skin, your nails. Um, if you're getting vision issues and it's like, hey, it's getting worse. My vision's getting worse. I, I was I was here, now I'm here. Think of omega-3s, increase those. If your joints are inflamed a lot, even if there's even research covering how they help with migraines and, 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 and so many things. And you know, they're great to take, especially like if you're a student, if you're studying a lot, not only that, but just working every day, we need to have the brain working as good as possible. And this is one of the best uh, things you can do. All right, so where do you get them? There's not a lot of sources. There's really two main sources for your omega-3s, alpha linoleic acid, what the heck is that? We're gonna talk about that, and then fish. Uh, well, we're going to put a little asterisk besides the fish or a question mark. Um, so let's, let's kind of get into those. So alpha linoleic acid, this is the ones, um, you know, if you don't eat meat, if you're a vegan, this, these are your sources. Um, and just kind of write these down. But even at that, there's a problem because alpha linoleic acid doesn't turn into the good kind you need very much. The most important one is called DHA. Now we need DHA and EPA both, but DHA is the one that really helps with the brain. It converts to DHA at less than 1%. What the heck? EPA a little more, but only five to 20%. So if you're depending on those things we just showed to get your omega-3s, you're, you're gonna have to do a ton of them which isn't going to be good either. Um, so again, you, you've got to figure out a different way to do this. So let's talk about that. Now, again, uh, fish, fish is the other source. You know, we, we hear about fish oil um, and, and, you know, is that good? The fish oil industry is gigantic. And so um, it, it, it is not, I'm probably going to get a lot of hate mail after this video uh, from that industry because I don't want you to do fish oil. Fish oil is horrible. And the reason why is because all fish, especially the fish where they get fish oil from, contains mercury. Now, some companies will say, oh, well, we cook it out. We, we process it out. Well, if you cook it out and you change the temperature of that oil, you just destroyed it. So it, your fish oil then is just junk. Everything in that capsule is junk. And then they'll say, oh, well, we cold press it. Well, you cold press it. It's still got the mercury in it. So, and, and other heavy metals. So you can't, so then let's take a step back and say, wait a second, where do fish get their Omega-3s, where do they get their oils? I mean, think about that. They don't just, they are just born with them. Their body doesn't make them. They are essential also. So they have to go to algae. Algae is where you get your essential fatty acids. So let's not even take fish oil. Let's throw it out of the ballpark here and let's do, do algae oil. That's the safe bet. All right, next one here, number two, monounsaturated fatty acids. What are those? The most common one is olive oil. I mean, there's a bunch of others on here. I love avocado oil. I love some of these others here too. Um, 
but olive oil is the one you'll you'll hear about the most with this. And monounsaturated fatty acids, you can call them MUFAs. This is the term uh, that I'm going to use, MUFAs. And um, yeah, they do some great things here. Look at that list, heart, prevent diabetes. Again, mitochondria on there, very important. Affect your mood, affect your bones. I mean, they've got, there's, there's more than on this list. There's more advantages to all these oils than what I listed here. So olive oil is called oleic acid. Just think all oils are acids, basically. Now, the great part about olive oil or oleic acid is your liver loves this stuff. It is fantastic. It actually helps a, um, a gene uh, in your liver, a PPAR alpha, to manufacture enzymes better. Actually, what it does is it kind of supercharges your liver. So uh, make sure you're getting in your olive oil on a regular basis. And let's even go a little further with that is there's a problem with olive oil. If you start using, if you watch some of these cooking shows, what's the thing they use to start to, you're, you're cooking in your pan, they pour olive oil in there. Then they start cooking at a high temperature, like a meat or something like that. No, no, no. So as soon as that olive oil gets above 310 degrees, the, the bonds that hold that oil together, the, the actual bonds break and it, because they're fragile and it turns into a trans fat. Not good. Do, do not, I mean, if you're just cooking at low temperatures, no big deal, but stay below 310. Olive oil is meant to put on salads. It's meant to put on over things. Uh, you could just do it, you know, teaspoon, tablespoon of it. So not a problem there. Polyunsaturated fatty acids. So this is number three. You hear about these. Again, they have many sources too, like I've listed. We've got plant and animal sources for these. They're also really good for you. Although when they first started to kind of make polyunsaturated fatty acids um, kind of popular uh, in a negative way, uh, where you would hear about them, they would call them PUFAs. And, and just like I said, MUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids are PUFAs. So again, they also have benefits, but they were originally kind of advertised, oh, stay away from the PUFAs. These are bad. You want to really avoid these. Mm, let's, let's talk about that because they do have all these great benefits also. And they are, they're, they are stronger. The monounsaturated fatty acids are kind of fragile. That's why they can't go to a high cooking temperature. Polyunsaturated fatty acids, you can cook them at higher temperatures. So the problem is, is there's a lot of them in this world. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. Some of these below you want to kind of avoid, especially like vegetable oil. I'm not a fan of it all, but these PUFAs are high in omega six fatty acids acids. And um, so they don't really have a lot of omega-3s in them. So I'm going to talk more about that here in a minute in the ratio that you want. So continue to watch till you see that ratio because that's extremely important. But yeah, your nuts, your seeds. The problem is, is if you eat a lot of poofas, you're probably going to gain a lot of weight. And that's a lot of people who say, oh, I eat nuts all the time. I eat nuts all day long. Yeah, it sounds healthy, sounds fantastic, but it can be a problem there too. Although very good for the immune system. And then we have number four, saturated fatty acids. Now, these are the ones that have really been uh, kind of demonized, especially um, back in the 60s and 70s. This guy, Ansel Keys, uh, who's a physiologist, medical physiologist, he basically said all you know fats are evil. They cause cholesterol and this causes heart disease. And so stop eating all fat, eat little crackers instead, things like that. And so, you know, the whole low fat craze went through and um, we still see signs of that today. You still see labels at the grocery store that say low fat. You People even still buy milk that 2% or 0% fat because people don't eat eggs because they think it's, you know, it, it's just, they really messed people up. They really messed up a lot and never really apologized for it. So saturated fatty acids, you can get it from animals, fats, um, or you can get it from dairy. There's really two types of this and not everybody really never talks about this. There's even chained, odd chained, and, and they are metabolized differently in the body. So the interesting thing is the odd chained, the ones that come from milk are anti-inflammatory, which is great. But number one, you aren't going to get that from 2% or 0% milk. You can get it from whole milk, real milk, but then what are the disadvantages of milk? I mean, so many, I mean, you, uh, these cows are not treated good. They're, you know, what are they eating? I mean, you gotta, if you have your own cows and you know exactly what's going in and you're milking them and potentially don't pasteurize, then you may be able to take advantage of these odd chain fatty acids. Also, if you don't have an issue, some people of course have issues with dairy, uh, casein, um, and, 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 or even just, um, um, with the enzymes there. So again, um, uh, the even chain fatty acids, the one from meat, they aren't really pro or anti-inflammatory. They're just kind of neutral. So, you know, Ansel Keys, um, I'm not going to say any bad words here. He, he really messed a lot of people up. All right. Fat, these saturated fats, they are good. You know, no problem with your butter. Um, again, 
you just don't want to overdo a lot of these things. So cell membranes, good cholesterol, resist high heat, reduce stroke risk. I mean, great stuff. Promote satiety. You know, we need these fats and oils to help make us feel full. All right. Medium chain triglycerides. So this is the popular one. I mean, it's been popular for a little bit. You know, any of you who are on a ketogenic diet um, or trying to get into ketosis, medium chain triglycerides are the, the thing. And again, your brain really loves medium chain triglycerides. It really, you know, when you, when you get into ketosis, your brain actually loves it. It is like, Hey, my focus and concentration is really good. My, my memory is really increased. I mean, you can notice all kinds of benefits from getting into ketosis, especially on blood sugar and all kinds of things. So there's a lot of advantages to these medium chain triglycerides. So again, great way to, to go. You'll see them on a lot of menus now. Now we're starting to see them marketed. Um, but you know, uh, if you're going to do uh, coconut oil, great, but I mean, MCT oil, you might as well, cause it doesn't have the taste. Um, so the thing you got to watch for is if, you are doing medium chain triglycerides, don't do a bunch of saturated fat at the same time. And this is the problem with people going into these ketogenic diets is they will just really ram in all the oils they can. And so we get the saturated uh, fats, the medium chain triglycerides, the liver says, uh-uh, I can't, can't do this, can't metabolize all this. And then we start to get oxidation, inflammation. The liver starts to uh, not work properly. So you don't want to, you don't want to do that. Number five. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was our next one there. We still got them. This is the different types of medium chain triglycerides. Think of it this way. We've got about four different kinds, C6 through C C12. Think of that as a chain of these. And if you got a really long chain like C12, it doesn't absorb as easily. You got to break that down so it can actually absorb through your intestine. Shorter chain, a lot easier to absorb. And a lot of times, if you look at these bottles, they'll say, hey, it's got caproic and caprylic acid in it. They'll say C6, C8, and it'll give maybe a ratio and a number. So try to go for those lower ones. Lauric acid, kind of interesting. You can buy that, and that actually is a great uh, antibacterial. The, the, um, there's a company that, that actually uh, makes a lot of that. Um, so MCT oils, like we talked about, coconut, butter, cheese. Now, when it, we got to qualify these. Butter, cheese, whole milk, but they got to be from grass-fed fed cows. Because if your cow is eating corn, um, not going to happen. Certain types of feed, not going to happen. You got to have the cows that are actually eating the grass in the field like they're meant to. Then you've got, then you get these uh, MCT oils uh, from these types of things. All right. Omega-6 fatty acids. So this is number six. We're, we're getting closer to the worst. Um, omega-6 is now not that these are horrible. Look at all the advantages. I mean, great stuff still. We we still need these. They're not a, a, a totally bad thing, but they are pro-inflammatory. So if you eat a lot of them, you increase inflammation. Like it says, they're a precursor to arachidonic acid. And this in your body turns into these pro-inflammatory cytokines, these messenger, these signalers in your body that say, hey, start the fire. There's a battle going on. We got, we need to fight. And so we do need inflammation at certain times, but we don't need chronic inflammation. We got to fight bad guys, but we don't need it to go on and on and on. And then we have some chronic health issue. So where do you get these? Here's all these sources, great stuff. But the thing is, is in moderation, watch the amount. And then you got to balance omega-6s and omega-3s. So let's get soon here to the ratio. All right. In fact, we'll go right now. Okay. So omega-6. Now we want a one, here's the secret. We want a one-to-one -one ratio, omega-6 to omega-3. This is kind of backwards. If you look at the screen, it says omega-3, omega-6. Switch those because currently in America, it's 25 to one omega-6 to omega-3. Meaning the omega-6 is we're eating 25 times more of that than we are the omega-3s. Not a good balance. Not a, that's, that's very pro-inflammatory in the United States. Um, uh, no wonder people have a lot of health issues. So we've got to get that ratio correct. So when you're looking for a supplement, you need it to be this ratio. Okay, let's get to the worst of the worst. These are the trans fats. You've probably heard of those. Um, these have been around for a lot of years. They were invented a long time ago and they were used because if you put them in food, it doesn't go bad. It just sets there. It, it, you know, if you take this item at the bottom of the screen and you just set it out for years and years and years, it won't mold. It won't go bad. It'll just sit there and, and look pretty similar. It might dehydrate after a while and it'll look kind of yuckier, but it's not going to go away. Um, the thing is, is you cannot break this stuff down. Not only you can't, but bacteria can't break this stuff down. And that's why it lasts forever. 
Uh, you know, because usually if you have a regular piece of food that doesn't have trans fats, it starts to rot or go bad. That's because the bacteria is breaking it down. Trans fats, bacteria are like, hey, we can't eat this stuff. This is crazy. Even your own body says, we can't we can't even break it down with our own enzymes. There's no human enzyme for trans fat. So what does it do? It goes to your liver and it just sits there. It goes to your heart and just sits there. And then, th I mean, this is poison. This is basically poison. And it's in so many things that we continue to eat because they taste so amazing. You know, donuts, burgers, fries, you know, we're eating this stuff all the time. Yeah, it does negatively affect cholesterol, heart disease, diabetes. It's carcinogenic, pro-inflammatory. I mean, this stuff is just pouring gas on a fire for you. So here's where we find a lot of these things. You know, stay away from these if possible there. Um, the problem is, is we tend to go for these things because they're fast, because they're easy, you know, packaged food, all this stuff. But mm, pro-inflammatory, you're just, you're, you're just poisoning yourself, I hate to say. So it's staying away from these things. So what do we need? We kind of need a perfect formula. We need something that has algae oil, that has the ratio one-to-one -one of omega-3s to omega-6s, has some borage oil in it, which kind of captures all the linoleic acids, oleic acids. We need the flaxseed oil. So we get these different types of you know, acids with that also. And then we, again, we want the proper ratios and we want it in a stabilized form. So, and this is what I take and that I love. So I'm going to put, I'll put a link to the one that I'm not going to say it here. I'll put the link below um, uh, to the one that I like, and then you guys can look at that. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this and got some great stuff out of it. Um, do watch our next video. I think you'll like it uh, just as much. All right. Have a great day and God bless.